as hard drives continue to get bigger and bigger and bigger and faster and faster and faster, it becomes less and less necessary to clean out unneeded, unnecessary, and unwanted files from your system. But that doesn't mean that there's no reason to go and do so. Sometimes it's a good idea to do a bit of spring cleaning and get rid of especially duplicate files and empty folders and all of that fun stuff that you really don't need on your system. So today we're looking at a tool to help us do exactly that. This is CZ Corker. There's probably a way to pronounce that name. I just don't know what it is. Today we're going to be looking at the GUI front end, but there is also a CLI front end. They do basically the same stuff functionality wise, but obviously the CLI is much better at, you know, doing automated stuff and the GUI is better at showing you what's actually happening. But at the end of the day, they're going to do the same thing. The general idea is it does a recursive search of your selected directories. So those can be added by clicking on the add button here to use a file browser, remove to remove them, or you can go and manually type in the file path. Then from there, it'll go and recursively search that directory for files that you may want to remove. Now, it is very important to note that this will not automatically delete any files for you. It is going to show you the files that match these various criteria and then give you the option to pick which ones you want to remove because the application may not make a correct assessment and it would be really dangerous to have it just arbitrarily deleting files. So once you've selected your directory, in this case, I'm using my pictures, click on the search icon on whichever category you're interested in looking at. So right now I'm in duplicate files and these are the files that it says are duplicated. Now, it's important to note that there's also various criteria to determine what is a duplicate. By default, it is going to be using a hash of the file, but maybe instead of that, I wanna go by the file size. So we're gonna search that now there's considerably more in this list. Some of these are files that are not at all related, but they are very, very close in size. Same if we go by name, for example, now we have so many more, but a lot of these have absolutely nothing to do with each other. From my experience, and because this is literally the purpose of a hash, generally you want to keep it on the hash method because this is actually going to be comparing things that are actually similar. But there are still various types of a hash and maybe for certain use cases, you want to try out the different ones to see if you get extra things that weren't being picked up. Also, if you do not want it to be recursive, you can go and disable that by clicking on this tick box right here. Generally though, you want to keep it recursive just so you know, you go through more things you want to check. But maybe you want to go one by one and that's what you want to do. Being recursive though, do be careful about which directory you actually pick because if you go with like your root directory, it'll take a very, very long time to run. Maybe not forever, but it'll feel like it. And by default, it does exclude directories that you really don't want to be touching. So things like your proc directory, dev, sys, things like that. Also, it excludes things in the .git directory, .trash directories, all of that fun stuff. Places where you generally just want to leave it alone and let it do its thing. While things like images will be given a preview in the application, other things like music and videos won't be, and some things, it doesn't really make any sense to give it a preview, things like GIMP project files, for example. So in that case, what you can do is double click on that file and it will open that up in the default application to open those files. So here we go, here is a headbanging guru. Once you've searched the files to actually delete them, then you need to select them. Now, when there's only three sets and each of those sets only have two items, doing this one by one isn't that big of a deal. But maybe you have a hundred sets and there's 10 items in each. In which case, you probably want to go and use a selection method. So clicking on the select button is going to give a couple of things available here. So we can go and select all but the oldest. We can go and select all but the newest. We can select the one oldest file or the one newest. We can reverse the selections or we can do a custom selection. So a custom selection will allow you to do a file glob. Maybe you want to get rid of any of the files that exist in a certain directory or maybe any of them that have a certain number sequence on the end. Maybe you've resized an image and you name the original version dash original and you want to get rid of that version. And once you've selected the images, clicking on the delete button is going to get rid of it. So let's get rid of this one right here. 
It's going to prompt us, which is really good, but it also gives the option to disable the prompt. I'm going to say OK, and now because there's no longer a duplicate, it's been removed from the list. But maybe you don't want to delete it, and there's a reason why there's two copies in separate locations. In which case, why don't we just link them? So we have the option of doing a sim link or a hard link. Now, keep this in mind. The application will crash if you have nothing selected and click one of those buttons. It shouldn't do that and might be fixed in the next version, but the latest version isn't available in the AUR yet. But if we have them selected, so this one and this one here, then click on sim link, it'll work just fine. All of the same tabs work in basically the same way, so let's go over what they actually do. So the next tab is empty directories. This is directories that are empty. Pretty self-explanatory. Now, big files doesn't necessarily mean actually big files. What it's going to do is show you the number of biggest files you have selected here. So right now I have 50 here. So this is going to show you the 50 biggest files inside of this directory. Maybe you have something in there that for whatever reason is multiple gigabytes and maybe that's taking up a lot of space that you've been wanting to clear up. In my case, I have a videos directory with a lot of my YouTube stuff. I have a lot of YouTube streams in there and I forget to delete them sometimes, eating up a lot of hard drive space. And then empty files is basically the same as empty directories. Files that have zero size. Generally, these can get created if you accidentally use like a touch command and forget to delete the file. Or maybe some application has some files sitting around that it was supposed to write to but never actually did so. But it's also not a temporary file. So it's just sitting there for seemingly no reason. And then temporary files are things like part files for a torrent, part files for a video that you're downloading with some various tool, maybe parts of an autosave file used for a project, and things like that. Things that an application is supposed to clean up when it's done with them, but it just never actually did so. For whatever reason, maybe the application crashed or you quit it before it got to actually do so. Then similar images and music duplicates are basically the same thing as duplicated files but these tabs are more specialized on finding those sorts of files. So similar images has a lot of things that are only relevant on images, and let's see if it actually finds anything more. It does also take a lot longer to run because this is doing a lot more computation. And once that finished running, we saw a lot that it seems to think are similar. Now, not all of them are the same image. For example, this cursed creation and this cursed creation are not the same cursed creation. They're just cursed in their own separate ways. But say this screenshot here and this screenshot actually are identical. So it gives you a rating of how similar they are and you can actually control like how much you want them to be similar to actually include in this list. Maybe you want to include everything that seems remotely similar and go for a more detailed inspection. And likewise, music works in a similar way. One very easy way to compare music is by looking at the ID3 tags. So it compares things like the title, artist, album title, album artist, year. I feel like it should also compare things like the album art as well. Because if the album art is different, it's very likely the same song, but from a different album. And maybe there is a reason why you have both of them. Let's say one's a live album, one's a studio album. And then invalid sim links are sim links that point to files or directories that don't exist or never existed in the first place. This can very easily happen when you're deleting old files and you forget there's a sim link that points to that file, leaving this broken thing just sitting there. Also, it can happen when you're making the sim link and you just point it to a location that doesn't exist. Maybe you make a spelling mistake or something like that and the sim link just doesn't actually work. Overall, I think this is a really useful application that doesn't hide its useful features behind a poorly designed interface. While the interface here is relatively basic, it's basic in a way that makes it easy to actually navigate. So if you want to try this out for yourself, it is available on the AUR, there is an unofficial PPA over on Ubuntu, there is uh, Docker, Flatpak, Snap, Cargo, AppImage, even a pre-compiled binary, or you can just go and compile it from source. I may have missed one of the distribution methods, but I definitely covered most of them, and it's going to be there for pretty much anyone who wants to use it. Also, it's even available over on Windows and Mac OS as well, if you want to use it on those systems. So, while CZ Corker might not be something you use every single day, 
on those days where you are dealing with old files that you don't really know where they're located or if you have duplicates or anything like that, it might actually come in handy, especially if you do tend to build up various temporary files that you were supposed to delete but never really got around to doing so. So let me know your thoughts down below. Is this something you'll go and use or maybe you're using one of the competing tools that does basically the same thing, but in its own unique separate way. I would love to know. So if you like this video, I'm going to go and like the video. And if you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, go check out my Patreon, subscribe to the Pay link in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over Tea available basically anywhere. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Robson Plays. That's going to be it for me and I'm out. <laughs>